there are two types of meditation, personal and impersonal. What we practice this morning, it is impersonal. Why? Well, we are not taught about any personal divinity in the practice. So it is universal. Not for a form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not for a fixed form. Okay. Yeah. Now, first let us try to know what we mean by meditation. Meditation means <coughs> it is the connecting one's consciousness with the infinite reality. In Vedanta we have Atman and Paramatma. Atman and the same. If it is one and the same, we need to know as how we need to connect to the Paramatma Supreme Self. Then it is very difficult for us who have been let us say structured in different ways, structure our life pattern to perceive that infinite reality. That is why we have got what is called divine realities. <coughs> um, divine re re realities can be personalized. So that is why we say what is called Ishta Devata, chosen ideal. My chosen ideal may be different than that of you. Let us take for example Sri Ramakrishna himself. He started adoring Divine Mother Kali. Why did he do it? Was it taught to him? Wantingly or unwantingly, he was made to worship the Divine Mother. Through the worship, he somehow he felt, here, I must perfection myself. So he started loving that reality as Mother, Mother Kali. Mother Kali is not different from the infinite reality. Now, when we uh, conceptualize the infinite reality, let us take for example Kali itself, Kali herself. We project Kali in a particular way. It is not Kali projecting, it is we who are projecting. It is something like this artist when they want to paint something. First, that painting has to come out from within. The whole scene must be there within. Then it is projected on the screen. In the same way, we have to internalize that reality within. Then it is projected externally. So, external projection, they are only the support to the mind. Mind is not allowed to disperse this way and that way. That is why such, if you are, if we are habituated to project ourselves. When we see uh, we are projecting ourselves, even if it is the divine reality, we bring, when we say 
divine uh, Kali is my mother. Now first the mind gets connected to our biological mother. Now this connection has to be transformed as the divine reality. How can we do it? Through the heart. Love. <coughs> so in the same way, if you have remarked, Ramakrishna, the love of the biological mother, mother is transformed as the divine. And for that matter, did he uh, lose <coughs> the love of his biological mother? Not at all. Rather, it got intensified. Now, that is why when we say, when we project, uh, the projection has to become, uh, should be directed towards the infinite reality. So we have, uh, certainly must have read the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna. Brahman and Kali, they are not different and the same. Like uh, the fire and its power to burn. <coughs> so Kali is the infinite reality. In the same way, if you worship Durga, same thing. If you worship Krishna, same thing. If you worship Shiva, same thing. Now, when you, when you worship Shiva, you say, you are worshipping Shiva in Lingam. Why is it? Uh, all types of uh, explanations. The real, or what is called real meaning, uh, let us say, in the Vedanta, the conception of Hiranyagarbha. That is the what is golden egg, which has the power to create. So it is Hiranyagarbha that is worshipped there. Because we are the creation, we need to get into that reality which from which we are we are created. So here worship of Shiva as in, in Lingam or whatever it is, it is it is how we get connected to the source itself. <coughs> then also we have projected the human form to Shiva. It's our our projection. Now, we call a quarrel amongst ourselves on the projections. Projections have become real to us and it has created a lot of confusion <coughs> to everyone, everywhere. So in reality, these projections are the human projections. So reality is reality itself. So the real meditation is to realize this reality. Now, how can we meditate? Meditation becomes effective only when the psychophysic is harmonized. The entire psychophysic energy has to be harmonized. Slightest disharmony creates, uh, let us say, emotional problem. Or when you sit for meditation, all types of thoughts start coming up. It becomes very difficult to get concentrated on the idea. So that is why the first step is to harmonize the psychophysical energy. In reality, uh, what is called Hatha Yoga is created or suggested to the spiritual aspirants to harmonize the psychophysical energy. So 
otherwise you must certainly you must have known how Patanjali develops the entire process towards meditation. First step is Yama and Niyama. Certain personal disciplines, purification. Mm, how can we bring about purification? By positive thinking. Yeah, for example, uh, let us uh, let us try to understand how Patanjali proceeds to um, clarify. Tapaha Swadhyaya Ishvara Pranidhanani. Tapas austerity. Austerity, whatever kind of austerity one practices, perfectly all right to bring about the psychophysical energy in harmony. Then Swadhyaya. Now, when the psychophysical energy is harmonized, it becomes easier for us to observe the thought patterns. For example, uh, generally we get angry when something goes wrong, which is not uh, right up to our understanding and all that. Now here, the person who has harmonized the psychophysical energy is able to look at the uh, situation or person or things, why it has gone wrong. Don't, he, does, he or she has the capacity not to allow that particular emotion to come up and dominate our personality. So the person is capable of seeing it and either one ignores it or one tries to correct it. So that is how certain disciplines are prescribed by Patanjali. Uh, for example, he speaks about ahimsa, violence, uh, non-violence. Are we to practice externally? First we have to practice in ourselves. All types of cruelty begins in us. Then it is externalized. Instead of it, first we need to control ourselves, discipline ourselves, transform our personality. So that is why some certain uh, also let us uh, why should be truthful? Because the life itself is, is true. Anything goes against it, brings us suffering. So we don't want to suffer. You may say in, in the manifest world, we, we, we need to be like that. Yes. But how long one can go on with it? One day or other, we are discovered. And the consequences, who have to suffer? That's one self. Why allow ourselves to get into such troubles? Why not from beginning itself? Be strict about ourselves. So that is why Patanjali goes on prescribing certain um, methods, yama and niyama. Then comes the asana, postures to harmonize psychophysical energy. Then comes what is called pratyahara. Pratyahara means uh, the capacity to withdraw the senses tendency of the organs, sense organs, is to go outward all the time and bring information. See, they bring us information, but they bring us wrong information. Why they bring us uh, wrong information? Because the sense organ, organs, organs are 
directed by the ego centric attitudes, ego centric being. Now, ego centric being is structured. We have, we have to go beyond, uh, we have to come out of the structure. We have to become the whole being. That is why outgoing tendency of the organs should be controlled, directed towards the self, as we practiced uh, in, the, in the morning. Okay, for example, I, I asked you to touch your eyes and direct the inner vision towards the heart, towards the source. So that is one way of directing ourselves to the source. So every aspect of our uh, being should be directed towards the self because self is the uh, center for everything. So if we forget the self, <coughs> everything becomes forgotten. Everything becomes nil everywhere. So that is why it's, it's very beautiful uh, science, the Vedanta. It's in Chandogya Upanishad, is it not? Atmanastu kamaya pati priyo bhavati. We, you love your husband or wife or children or what, whatever it is. Why? It is self love. not for anything else. <coughs> so in the same way, if we forget ourselves, ourself, everything becomes, everything ends up in all types of problems. The more you get into yourself, the more you become happy. So that is how Patanjali goes on suggesting us to withdraw ourselves. Then we must, then only when we are able to control the sense organs, we develop the capacity to get concentrated, to hold on whatever we are doing or whatever our objective may be. So that capacity gets developed. Then when you become intently concentrated, it leads to meditation, jnana. So this is how Patanjali advises us to go forward. Well, now let us analyze what we have practiced in the morning. So we chanted Om. Why we chanted Om is our whole our being, our real self, self-expression. So when the real self starts expressing itself, all the negative energies are alienated. This energy, vibrational energy, goes on manifesting in every cell and molecule of your body. And second step we practice was this. Take the consciousness, consciousness to infinity. Why should we take our consciousness to infinity? If the consciousness is uh, conditioned by psychophysic, then it gets diverted to many other things. So here, when you go to the infinity, you are not conditioned by anything. The consciousness becomes united, unified with the infinity. Though we are not developed the capacity, that is the step that you have to take up. Well, what is infinity? How are we to perceive it? It's pure consciousness itself. There is no manifestation. The blue sky, it's unconditioned. So, that is a step for us, help for us to expand our consciousness. Then we 
represent pure consciousness expresses itself as the harmony of pure energy. Well, we may argue saying that energy is not consciousness. No. The energy manifests itself in uh, different uh, degrees according to the manifestation. If there is no consciousness, then there is no energy. That is why Ramakrishna says Brahman and Shakti, they are one and the same. A picture of fire cannot burn. A real fire alone can burn. So it is why pure consciousness is the harmony of pure energy. That is the life force. In reality, what we call <coughs> the luminosity, light, it is not the sunlight. Even the sun receives the light, power to burn or whatever it is. It is that energy, infinite energy that, let us say, concentrated at a particular degree we say 500 uh, Celsius degrees or something, whatever it is. It is concentrated there in that, in that particular state. That is why you get that uh, light. But the source is that infinite. Now, we said infinity is the luminosity. The word used is tejas. Or let us say Ojas. Ojas does not refer to the sun, sun energy or sun luminosity. It, it is referred to the self. So infinite self is the Ojas, Tejas. So that luminosity. It is that that expresses itself as the beauty. Yes, for us human beings, the, this beauty expresses itself according to the structure. <coughs> now, what is the structure? One is material structure, the body, and then another is the prana, the full life force. Do you think your life force expresses itself harmoniously? to all your parts of the body. It depends. I can give you an example. You are conversing with someone whom you like. The energy is diverted towards the person with whom you are conversing. You are not conscious of your body. Perhaps an insect is biting, you are not conscious of it. So that is how the energy gets di directed, diverted. That is how it happens in our everyday life. Due to various situations, persons, objects, this and that. Now here, we'll have to harmonize that energy, make that luminosity express itself rightly, then your beauty gets expressed. You may say, so and so is so, so ugly, no, perhaps so and so is dominated by the tamas or whatever. Also, even if you say ugly, it is your projection. Perhaps that person must be pure in heart, good in heart. We don't see that. So we just project ourselves. No, it is not. So whatever is good, it is the expression of that infinite reality. So that 
that is what uh, explained in the Bhagavad Gita also. So, uh, to see what is real, these stages, inner light, self light is the source, power. Another example I give you is this. Take for example, you light a candle or a lamp. lamp. Why? Is your divinity pleased with your light? It is self-light that is <coughs> means that is, that is how you get connected yourself to the higher reality. So <coughs> that makes you you uh, happy when you let it down. God thought comes. That thought removes the negative energy. So, peace and harmony expresses itself in you. That is the beauty. Peace of the heart, inner harmony, that is in reality the beauty. This harmony, this peace belongs to infinite reality. So, then, next step. It is this harmony that expresses itself as love. Do we appreciate anything ugly? Do we love anything ugly or whatever it is? We love what is beautiful. If that beauty is not there in us, then there is no law. You may say, how is it? Take for example, the person whom you love is very angry with you. You also become angry. Where the love has disappeared. Your love has become anger. Why? <coughs> you say I love you, but then now you are angry. <coughs> Why do you want to transform your love as anger? Love is love. So, what is called love does not belong to this negative energy at all. So that is why what you call love, it is the expression of the self. So we need to stick to it. We need to make it more intensive. So when that starts emanating as waves, yes, all your what you call enemies, people who do not like you and all that shortly get transformed. Now, <coughs> of course we will discuss about it in the, in the afternoon. Take for example Holy Mother. She was confirmed, confronted with the dacoit, a cruel personality. Normal persons like me or anyone would have run away, tried to run away, escape. No, she did not. Simply she expressed her love to the person. How? Father. Can any father do any harm to his daughter? You see, she generated that love in him and brought that state of anger or whatever it is totally eliminated, transformed the person. So that is the power of love. So that is what we have to um, intensify through the meditation. Love is intelligence. Power of 
knowing the real. Now, yes, all of us, we possess the intelligence, but then that intelligence is, con uh, is uh, conditioned, limited by the structural uh, capacity. Structural capacity can be overcome provided we intensify the life force. Then, whatever the intelligence brings as uh, the right experience, that is the knowledge. The right knowledge alone can give us this satisfaction, total satisfaction. Until then, we are not satisfied. That is why the Upanishads say, Bhuma Iva Sukha. Bhuma means, uh, means infinity. Alpa Vastu, mm, uh, sorry, in the limited, there is no joy at all. Nalpe Sukha Vastu. Nalpe Sukha Vastu. In the limited, there is no joy. Uh, in the limited, what we call joy, it is temporary, always changing, transitory. So here you see, in meditation, we are made to intensify all these aspects. So we are made general, uh, directly connected to this self. So that is one part of it. Then we go to the second part, uh, visualize the infinity in the, in the heart. Why heart? Because through the heart alone we are connected to everything in the manifest world. It is not that easy to come out of the manifest world it is not easy to come out of the structural um, conditionings. So it is here, through the heart, we can go beyond. So here this uh, space, infinite space. So we have the uh, possibility to expand our heart to infinity. Then we are made to visualize what is called the lotus, blooming lotus. We said blooming lotus is the expression of pure love. Why it is lotus? Why, in, in, why not a rose or any other flower? Lotus has a significance. <coughs> uh, if you speak to the yogis, they will say the heart chakra this comes out made like a lotus. Let us say, for example, this chakra, like a lotus, has eight petals. Why eight petals? Because it is open to all directions, eight directions. That infinite power and force is able to penetrate to that center. Then another, another important uh, aspect of lotus is that lotus plant comes up from the mud, dirt. So then when the lotus flower starts blooming, it gives you perfume. You are automatically attracted. Bees come and collect the nectar, what you call honey. Though it is there, it, 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 it was born in the, uh, in the dirt, mud or whatever it is. And it comes and becomes the flower 
all those things are eliminated. In the same way, when our heart opens up, whatever dirt might have been there, it's all washed off, it's all eliminated. Only the pure love starts expressing itself. Pure love is the force of life, like nectar. See, take for example, your baby, if you don't give love to your baby, it won't grow up. Right? Only when you are able to give total love, unconditioned love, <coughs> then there is the total growth. Otherwise, unconsciously, if you don't love the baby, the baby feels that vibration. Later, the baby may say, oh, my parents did not like me at all. Perhaps I was, have been an unwanted child. All types of uh, thinking comes. So here you can imagine how important is this life force, what we call love. So it is how we need to intensify that pure love. Automatically when that love starts expressing itself, you feel such a peace and harmony in you. Whatever you speak, it becomes so very I mean, ex full of love. It appeases others also. So, the love is the intelligence. Also, we made you to visualize the rising sun on the lotus of your heart. Now, why rising sun? Uh, we are directly connected to the sun energy. Take for example, we say we, 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 we need vitamin D, sun energy, especially when the sun rises up. That is why in the yoga system also, they prescribe you to do what is called Surya Namaskar. So it is to energize ourselves with that vitamin D. So you can, ima can you imagine the depth of the understanding, realization of those spiritual scientists? So now in our meditation, your real self is like, like the rising sun. <coughs> Because your self, it goes on spreading light, energy, power, understanding. <coughs> it is that energy that manifests itself as OM. The sound, the, it is a positive sound, positive energy. So that is why we said, direct your vision towards the rising sun, your real self. And when we say O, oh, what happens is that the organ tendency to go outward is brought back to the self. So it is this in <coughs> harmony that is the love that expresses itself love and intelligence, then the knowledge. It is not secondary knowledge, it is the direct knowledge. So that is the joy of our life. So it is how, with this understanding, we need to meditate. Now, we were speaking about the personal God. 
may say it's all difficult for me to visualize the rising sun, this and that, all that. Now you bring your personal divinity to your heart. So, see that your personal divinity is full of that light. And that light spreads your whole being. Your personal duty, divinity is full of love. Feel that love. Your personal divinity is the intelligence itself. Feel that intelligence in every cell and molecule of your body. And personal divinity is the knowledge, bliss. So feel it. <coughs> so here, the personal divinity is the support for your mind to get concentrated. So personal divinity doesn't allow your mind to get dispersed. If you remark in the lap of Ramakrishna, people may criticize him, argue with him, immediately goes to the mother for solution. Why he goes to the mother? Because mother is the source of all knowledge, understanding, and everything. So every external action of Ramakrishna has this deep meaning to go back to the source. So it is how the meditation is efficacious to bring about transformation of our personal lives. And then, what about the mantras? The tendency of the mind is such, it's so, so very turbulent. The turbulent mind cannot be so very easily uh, brought back to the source. So that is why you need your mantra, personal mantra. <coughs> well, Patanjali, he says simply Om. Uh, Ishvara Pranidhanatva, devotion to Ishvara. The uh, infinite reality, which controls everything, which manage everything. Then how are we to address it? Om. What are you to do it? With Om. Tajjapa means you have to repeat it. Tadartha Bhavana. You have to uh, reflect on the meaning of the repetition of Om. Om is infinity. So your mind automatically gets directed towards the infinity. Well, we may say, we are not capable of doing it. That is why we are given what is called personal <coughs> mantra. Now, personal mantra, it can be repeated anytime, anywhere, under any circumstances. Take for example, you are working in your office. <coughs> Some problems come up. You are not able to know how to solve the problem. So get back. For example, two, three minutes. Just repeat your mantra <coughs> with heart and soul. We'll see the change. Go back, see how your problem is solved. Now, we see the problem as problem because the whole being is conditioned by the problem. Whereas, you come, get back, 
be in that what is called source, life source. It gives you what is called a kind of you become liberated by the conditioning forces. <clears throat> when you are liberated from the conditioning forces, automatically the inner intuition says, no, you have to do this way. You get the solution for your problems. way to overcome the problems, difficulties, frustrations of all life. If we, I mean, if you are caught up by anxiety, fear, then it is anxiety and fear dominate our personality. Here is the easiest solution. Why not? accept it, do it. <coughs> Five minutes left. Any questions? So we talked a lot about emotion. Is there any place for emotion in our life then? Should we not just disregard all emotions? Uh, yes. There are two ways. Emotions come up because we are attached to something or someone. That something or someone is not, I mean, ours now. So emotions come up. Now, we should not allow ourselves controlled by the emotions <coughs> because uh, what is gone is gone. How can you get it back? What is the use of getting emotional, getting destroyed by our, uh, ourselves? In its place, can't we use that emotion in a right way? in a positive way. Every emotion has an intelligence. Now, that intelligence, if it is wrongly used, it destroys us. In its place, why not use that intelligence in a right way? For example, um, your near ones, <coughs> dear ones, have done something wrong. So the immediate uh, reaction, emotion, it is anger. But anger can it solve the problem? Can it solve? Uh, uh, can it correct the individual? So in its place, you use the intelligence. Intelligence is not the anger intelligence. It is oh, my problem is there. Now, instead of uh, diverting the intelligence towards that particular emotion, you say, all right, that particular individual has done something wrong. I love the person. I need the person to be uh, what's called right, well, and all that. If you, if you want the person to be right, well, then you will have to contact the person in the right way. To contact the person in the right way, you need the right intelligence. How can I call? speak to the person? Take for example, somebody near, near once talks to you angrily. All right. 
remain silent. Out of few minutes, question the person, have you finished now? Well, yeah. the other person is still in this state of anger. Don't worry. Then suggest, come, let us go for your walk. I love you. Let us be together. Let us take a walk. Let us try to dissolve the problem. Now, slowly, the other person comes down, comes with you for a walk. Perhaps you are able to bring about the problem and solve the problem there. Oh, this, this is the problem. Why worry about it? Forget about it. After all, we are together. Let us be together. So this is how the in, uh, emotional intelligence is used for um, solving the problems. But the reaction is instant. It comes yeah. with lightning. Yeah. 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 That is where we have to... Yes. <coughs> that is where we have to be vigilant. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, this is regarding the way we do meditation, mostly around the, primarily around the, what should be your hand kept? When I see here, Bhagavan Buddha's fingers are in a certain way, <coughs> Ramakrishna Dev's fingers, Mother, Holy Mother's fingers, hands, or Vivekananda, they are all keeping their hands in different mudras, different yes, postures. Yes, yes. What should we follow? Why is it different? Like you can imitate. In imitation also, it is the right imitation. Uh, there is a significance. Take for example, you sit like this. Now, the this is called Chin Mudra. Why it is Chin Mudra? Now this is ego. This is your real self. Your ego draws the power from the Self. So when you, when it is uh, separated from the uh, what is called from the from the consciousness, with the limited energy, it creates all types of problems. In its place, you are connecting your ego to the self. Means pure consciousness and. It is tested by the yogis. Automatically, this mudra <coughs> brings down the agitation of the mind. This one. Mm -hmm. So. No, not the tip of the tongue. So it's, it's gratifying to see. Can both. Oh, okay. Your hunger for knowledge. I think you also need to satisfy your physical hunger too. <laughs> And uh, so, can I ask you, if possible, to remember all these questions that you have, maybe even write them down, because according to our program this afternoon, yes. we have an opportunity for question answers, uh, followed by questions. Right now, 